If you could live green, would you? I'm Nick Fedorov, host of Things Green, where we introduce nuggets of green lifestyle from gardening, upcycling, answering your questions, sustainability, even discussing environmental issues. You can become more confident in making the right decisions for you and your family. So come along as we are Things Green. Out in the yard and garden has never been so much fun. With our many playful laser cut pet, garden, and yard signs. More information at instylesteel.com. For nearly 90 years, the Bonide family has provided solutions to lawn and garden pest problems. Whether it's an insecticide, weed killer, fungicide, or plant care product, Bonide products will provide you the best solution to your lawn, garden, or home pest problem. Southland Sod Farms, creators of genuine marathon sod, pre-grown tall fescue grass. More information at sod.com. DRAM has been providing gardeners with professional equipment for over 80 years. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. And that's the way you keep your plants moist. Hi, I'm inviting you to come down to one of the free home shows where I give free garden talks. All you have to do is go to my website, thingsgreen.com, to see when the dates and the venues are at. Did you put all this here for me to eat? That's right. <laughs> Welcome, Nick. Look at I hope you enjoyed it. This is like a, a candy land for me. And they do feel like grazing. Look at this. This, yep. is, this is lettuce. Yep. Look at that. Oh, look. But look, it's itty bitty tiny lettuces. How in the world do you get this over, stuff over here? Look at that. Look at that. Itty bitty lettuce. Look at that. Oh, it's so good. Okay. okay Can yeah. you believe it? All of these are started by students. Really? At for, Fullerton College. Fullerton College? Yep. My alma mater. Really? <laughs> yeah. So all those plants here are done in the classroom for okay. them, part of their horticulture class, and then they bring out and donate to the community. Nice. And we, we were, in turn donate to the community. We weren't that nice when I was in school. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, so they grow this, they bring it over here. Yep. Where is here? So here's the growing experience. Welcome. It's at the May Center. May is an acronym, stands for Meditation, Agriculture, Yoga, and Education. Oh, you're not going to put me in a pretzel for that yoga thing, are you? Not at all. Oh. Yoga does not have to be on the mat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do we got going over here? So today we're going to nice. um, show you how to plant. It's nice. the beginning of spring. It's a perfect time. Beautiful sun, beautiful weather. Gorgeous. After the rain, it's gorgeous. All right, let's go over. So you have gardens all over the place. We have garden all over the place. There's okay. eight acres of farmland here. Uh oh, eight acres? Eight acres. That's a lot. Oh yes. Oh my goodness. All right. You know, so a, a, one, a, a 100 square foot garden can actually feed a family of four. Eight acres, That's you're a feeding a whole community. Oh yes, we are. Nice. And it's all donation based. Really? Oh yes. Wow. So fighting the food inequity in our community here. Okay, so, so, I, so I would imagine you didn't, yeah. you uh, don't walk up to your garden and have a pre-dug hole. No, so <laughs> I dug this one up just to kind of see and prepare. So for beginner gardeners or even um, just normal gardener, you know, you want to use your glove, just be careful. Mm -hmm. You want to dig a hole there. You notice that there are mulch here. Mm -hmm. So the mulch is very good at keeping the water conservation, but it also acts like a blanket for the plants. So. Um, put lots of mulch and it's also a way for us to be green. So you have all these uh, businesses that are landscapers chopping down trees. Give them a call and say, hey, I can use some mulch. For there my, you go. My yeah, they'll, yeah. Give, they'll give it away. Yeah, so here is They don't have to take it to the landfill and like you said, yeah. in the landfill and it's it's super inexpensive. And sometimes, I even know one, one arborist, he'll even take and he'll double grind it for you. Yep. 
Absolutely. Yeah, really Absolutely. cool. All right, so we're going to get this in the so ground. So we're going to get this in the ground. So do you we, dig enough hole. Do we know what this is? This is called yes. the Cherokee Purple. Oh, I love that. That's oh, a favorite. I love it. Yes. yes. All right, so the way you start planting, you want to squeeze the bottom, and you want to put your hand at the base of the plant, tip it over. Oh, look at those roots. They're you so pretty. You see all the beautiful roots? Oh, I love that. And so here's the first thing to do before you plant them. You've got to tickle the roots. <laughs> tickle them. Because you want them to spread and open up. <laughs> dig through. So tickle them. Right. And you want to know Beautiful. something? This is really important because there are companies that are starting to create these peat pots with these things. And if you were to plant those things in the peat pot, albeit the peat pot will eventually disintegrate. But the problem is, is that the root structure in that does not venture out like they give you the impression it would. If you got a peat pot, take the peat pot, take it out of the peat pot and then Throw it in the bottom of the hole. Otherwise, we've got this, and you can recycle these. You can oh, do yes. these all over again. I use them all the time. Okay, yep, go ahead. That's now right. What? All right, so you ready? Let's give it a new home. So a spiritual process, you just want to say, hey, I want to introduce you to your new home. You get snuggle in there, okay? So you want to put it in there. Remember that you want the base to come up. And tomato plants an easy plant for beginners to start because they're weak. You can't kill tomato plants. All right, you want to cover it up. And then you want to give it a snuggle tug. Look at okay. you, you're t tickling and snuggling. And snuggling. Man, yeah, this is a right. fun hobby. All right, and kind of cover it up, the mulch in, and Just voila, simple. it's done. So we ended up planting or installing a plant in around, if I wasn't here, in around mm -hmm. 10 seconds. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I'm a yapper. And how long for harvest, to harvest? Give this about two, three months and you'll be done. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I love that thing. Now, of course, you're gonna have to put a cage around it or do you let them run wild? We actually put a cage around it and we have bamboo uh, steaks that oh. we actually make our own cage. Okay. So next, I wanna show you uh, our chicken coops. Oh, coming you on chicken over. Coops oh over my gosh. How come there we... was no cock doodle dooly anymore when I got here? You know what the strangest thing? Huh. City policies, no roosters allowed. Oh, was that right? Yes. Well, you We're know- We're gonna make one exception. Though. You know, <laughs> in the world of chickens, uh, if you wanna, if, if you don't want fertile eggs, you can't have a rooster around. Exactly. So for a farm around sustainability, we need to educate our city leaders to say, hey, we need some roosters in oh, our farm. Oh, how interesting. Yes. So you put, oh, you got some strawberries growing over here. We got here. some strawberries growing. So it's nice. an education center for little kids as well. So oh. they get to come and plant. And okay. there's my little kid over there. She's oh, a, a youngest cute. farmer here. Nice. <laughs> All right. Hi, Alyssa. Alyssa Hi, is one Alyssa. of our interns here, learning about our farm and the, the green industry. Here's our chickens. Let's uh, open the coop up. Wait, 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 wait for you, you do? What are you doing over here? You're gonna let those, those are wild animals. I know, we love them. We're gonna <laughs> let them out, let them spread their joy all over the farm, and we'll feed them and gather some eggs. Now, do I need to jump on something high because they look like they're gonna attack me? Um, as long as we give them food, you're good. <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here we go. Here, here we, we go. go. We got a whole Letting bunch of cattle. Flock. Look at this. Oh, this is Hello, too cool. Hello, ladies. Oh, my Hello. goodness. Now, do we know what type? Looks like you have some uh, Rhode Island roads in there. Uh huh. Uh, Rhode Island Red. Rhode Island we Rhodes. have American Eagles. Uh huh. Um, we have the American Eagles produces blue eggs. Wow. So, um, Alyssa is collecting some eggs right now. Let's go check it out. Wait, we can go in there? Yep. Come okay. on in, you guys. Hey, Alyssa, we want to uh, collect some eggs with you. Look at this. Okay. So they eat our compost. So, you, so you've got a coop within a coop, it looks like. We get a coop within a coop, but they okay. get to roam around the farm. Anyway. And there's oh, some no, ladies that one just laid lay an egg. eggs. Yes. It just laid an egg. Just lay an egg. Oh my goodness. So there you go. There's one. That is so cool. Here's another. Look at that. Wow. Fresh eggs. Fresh eggs. And eggs are going for about $3,000 a, a dozen <laughs> right now. That's right. Very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, are they always laying the eggs in here in here and there and we have a couple other coops that they do and one time they laid some in the banana trees outside no way <laughs> cute. now are they are they primarily laying in the morning or do they lay at different times of day Different time of the day. Different yeah. times of day. So okay. each hen lays about one egg every 24 hours. Okay. We have about 30 chickens here. Nice. Mm -hmm. And one duck that was donated by a, a local middle school. They were um, incubating duck eggs as part of a classroom. 
Okay. And so we also adopt other eggs or chickens from okay. um, local community members. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Some of the, the coloring on some of these are just amazing. Yes. Gorgeous. Thank you. Now, I was in I was in Armenia one time, and uh, this is just a couple of years ago, and I was thank you, Alyssa. so yeah, thank you Go very ahead much. And put it I was you. so surprised that you don't have to put these in the refrigerator if you don't want to. No, you don't have to. They're so they're going to last eggs, a long time. Yes, they have a coating on the chicken eggs already that you don't need to refrigerate them. And Once I believe you it's, clean and them, and you I believe need it, to. Yeah, I believe it's yeah. called a bloom. Yes. So they have yes. a bloom on there. Yep. So you leave the bloom alone. And then, but you have to remember that bloom actually can contain bacteria. Like there's an egg right here that's got a little poo on there. Yep. So you got to be careful about stuff like that. Got to wash them. Yeah. Yes. You got to wash them afterwards. And then use them. Don't wash yes. them. Don't wash them and then leave them outside. Yes. Okay. Yes. I've never been around so many chickens like this in my life. This is so cool. Yes. Now, do you guys ever pick them up? We do. So it's very easy to pick them up. You go from the back and you kind of grab the wings. But I think right now, because it's early in the morning, let them run free. I think so. Yeah. They're just going to follow us. Okay. Very good. So over here, we have about over 300 fruit trees. We have the uh, mango orchard. Okay. Thai guava orchard, cherimoya orchard, all wrap around, avocados. Nice. And right above here is the ice cream bean tree. So this one, the flush tastes a little bit like vanilla ice cream up here. Really? Mm-hmm. And here we have sugar cane. So we have a sugar cane press over there. Okay. Um, we could take any of these sugar cane and start making our own sugar. Wait a minute. So this is an actual press? Uh, it's an actual press. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're gonna come back some day, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make some real sugar. How's that sound? That sounds right. I love that idea. Okay. And here's some of our staff interns. This is Sarah. Uh, Hi, Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, I have to tell you, you're not a, you're not one of the lazier ones, are you? Because you're the only one that's sitting. Oh no, sir. <laughs> I'm still at work. Oh, oh you're you're still at work here? Yes. I so am. so what are we doing? We're actually deshelling some fava beans. Fava beans. Now fava beans are usually are really big beans. They are really they, big beans. You want to take a look? Yeah, look, look at, at that. Really big. Yeah. Look how huge they are. Okay, now, do you ever eat the shell of this? this no, or do you so the way the you process, like the way she's doing it, is two ways. So first, you have to take it off of the pods, pull it off, and then what you do is you have to de-shell it. So the green part inside is what you're eating. It tastes almost like edamame here. And wow. Then, you oh, actually yeah. eat that? Yep. Yeah. You can try one if you want. No, yeah. I understand that we're going to have a little special treat later, right? Oh, yes, yeah, I'm going, to, I'm, going to wait, I'm going to wait for that one. Is that okay? Good, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, okay, I well, want to show you, you the actual thank fava you. bean uh, plant here. Mm -hmm. What it looks like. It is a beautiful, beautiful plant here. Oh, look at that thing. You've got oh, all kinds gosh. of appendages on it. Yes, it's everywhere. No kidding. So how do you know when to pick them? You could pick them at different stages. Okay. You could leave them go really big, like a big pot like this one. Mm-hmm. And it gives you a different taste, a nutty taste or a sweet taste. Depending so, on the size. So depending on the size. So this is a little bit small. This is perfect. Okay. The sweetness taste, which she's um, de-husking right now. De-husking. Yeah. So you're de-huskifying those things. Oh, yeah. I think I just made a word up. Nice. Okay. Now, are these a perennial plant or... Do they, do they stick around all the time? Or do you they do not stick around all the you time. Have to and here. the good thing about the fava bean is they have a very short season. So, mm. right at the beginning of spring is where you get your fava beans, get all your recipes, and just enjoy the delicious taste of pre spring. Okay, so how are you going to take and, and uh, how, are you, how are you going to preserve them though? I mean, you pick them and do they we, get preserved? Yes. So, we actually donate them to the community. Okay. Rarely do we have food left over, but when we do, we actually either freeze them, oh. boil them, freeze them, and take them out when you're ready to eat them. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Okay, now we have some more fava uh, We have some more fava beans. So yeah. fava bean is everywhere right now. This is Masuma. Hi, that's Masuma. A big, that's a big basket you have there. Yeah. So yeah. Masuma. How, how long did it take you to, to do those, pick those? Uh, a few minutes. A few minutes, yeah. yeah. That's it, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now you want to try? Now, you're from some place that I've never been to before. Yes. So, Masama is a refugee from Afghanistan. She has a master's degree in farming. And it's such a beautiful process for the May Center is using farming and healing, developing wellness. Nice. For our, ourselves, community, and the environment. And this is the yoga part that she's doing because she's reaching in, picking stuff up, and putting in there. Being mindful of your body and yeah. your posture is the yoga part. And then being mindful of your breathing is the meditation part. These are so big. Look at that. They are. 
How come she didn't pick the big ones? Look at the yours are tiny compared to this. Man. All right, so um, we could Thank head you. back. Okay. Here's all the chickens just enjoying themselves. Now they're just. How, how do you corral them up? So they know by five o'clock to go back to their um, home. Oh, don't have to I was them. wondering why they had little watches on them. <laughs> Look at they're them. Just now they're just kind of walking with us right now. Oh yes. Now have any of these little guys attacked anybody? Nope. No. So they must be very well fed if that's the case. They're well fed and they're free range. They run around. Mm -hmm. They drop their fertilizer in the ground for us. It's, they're wonderful farm workers, by the way. Okay. We don't eat our chickens. We only have them here for the eggs. Um, we let them go through maturity and then we do a little ceremony when they actually, at the end of their days. Oh, okay. They last about six to eight years. Oh, that long? Mm -hmm. that's, quite a, that's quite a long time. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you have eight acres here, and eight acres is not easy to take care of. It's not so easy. So you do to take need care. volunteers to come out here? A lot of volunteers. Okay, so how would they end up coming here? How would they know? Is there a website or something like There's that? There's a website. Or? So the maycenter.org is where they actually could sign up for volunteers. Okay. Uh, put a schedule request, and then we actually let them know based on their schedule what okay. kind of programs is happening. Now, you're not opposed to people people uh, uh, like making donations, are you? Like not money, at money, all. Money. We <laughs> love donation. It would support our community cause. So here we have something that's really interesting because we're bringing this full circle over here. Yes. All the way from the plants that, uh, from my alma mater. Oh, you didn't know that part, did you? That was fun. I, I sprung that on you intentionally. From my alma mater into the ground, they're picking all this stuff, bring it over here, being fed and everything. And then this is the true thing of farm, to table. That's what we're doing over here. Farm to table. And believe me, they do need they do need the volunteers over here because I was the only one who knew how to start this tractor and bring it over here. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so what are we doing? So right now we're making a French omelet. Okay, so now for the record, I am a vegetarian. Okay. So I I mean I'm not a vegan, I'm a vegetarian. So yes. this is you something could do that eggs. I could do this. You could do eggs. Yeah. Okay, so this is a farm, so I'm just showing you how we're making a lot of stuff that's at the farm. So I have an induction. So what does induction mean? An induction using the electromagnetic energy to actually heat up the pot without using gas. Ah, so it's so like magic. It's like magic. Okay. And you are also actually saving the environment. All right, I like All that right. idea. So we do a lot of this. You kind of melt the butter in there. All right. Now was, that, right was that, now. now, was that butter measured out or you just figured, you know, I, I want to clog his arteries. I love cooking based on t intuition. Uh, okay. So cooking is about being present with ourselves okay. and cooking to our taste, what we enjoy. And taste actually triggers a memory of our childhood. All right. And so it's very, it's very gentle on our body. And so I want you to be... Um, comfortable cooking the way you would enjoy it. She's calling me a child because I've never had one of these before. But the next time I do, I'm going to remember this moment right now. Why don't you uh, <laughs> dehust that for us? A oh, bit. really? Yeah, let's do two, three beans. Okay. What do you think? So bring these over here like this. Yep. So we're going to crack this open. There you go. Just like a regular bean. Mm hmm. But these are gigantic beans. Oh, look at that. Pooping them right up. And you could do this with your family. Have fun mm -hmm. with the kids. So I'm the fifth generation of farmers in my family. Okay. And we do things slightly differently. We bring our traditions, but we do something differently. My background is also in biochemistry, so I like to bring the science into farming and food. You're like a brainiac in everything. You know, I just enjoy doing what I do. Good for you. So five generations, five generations here in America? Not in America. So I came here when I was about 10 years old. Okay. And I came here as a refugee of the Khmer Rouge genocide that started in 1975 to 1979. I'm gonna go around you a little bit to grab our spices. Okay. And um, there were no farms here in Long Beach. Mm. It was a cement jungle for me. So it was a shocker for me. I'm just adding a little bit of salt. It was a shocker for me. And so I started um, container you, gardening you, at you, home and my apartments. More? Just let me know and I'll pass it to you. Mm -hmm. You know what, I, I almost kind of feel like I'm with Julia Childs right now, giving me the, uh, the directions on what to do. Okay, and I'd like to do something special. I'd What's like it? to in include a little of my spice from the farm. So okay. turmeric, turmeric is so healthy for you. It's anti-inflammatory. It's great during the colder season. Eat it as much as you can. This is from our farm that's grown right here and there. Wow. 
How many of these am I supposed to cook, crack open? So let's do three. How about that? Oh, uh, yeah. So this, this is the third one. So this is the actual roots that comes from the ground. You mm. wash the dirt off. This okay. is what it looks like. You could dry it and make it into a little powder. Oh. And you could add this into your coffee or into... No. Oh, coffee? Yes, just a little bit. Okay. That's like it's people... A, that's it's like a people... spice, right? This doesn't taste that spicy. So people... This is very little. So people will actually put salt in their coffee. Did you hear about that? I heard about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Fresh spice. That does smell great. Mm. Now, I did the number one thing I should never have done, and I usually should teach you otherwise. When anybody puts something up to your schnoz like that, you should waft it in because you never know. It could be some kind of poison. Oh! <laughs> Okay, so... Uh, so now I'm going to put the butter I, in. I, I just melted the butter. Okay. So I did, did four, four of are, these. are we taking off another coat off of these? Um, you are okay because those are very young. Oh, okay. And they're, they'll be sweet. So look at they look like they're starting to grow again. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's right. All but right. These going to be very sweet. Let's get some oat milk in. Right here. Oh, oat milk. Okay. So I prefer to use oat milk versus so regular when milk. So you, when, you, when you milk oat... Or, no, I'm just kidding. It's very, it. easy <laughs> it's very easy to do. It's very easy to do. I come from Cambodia. We make it on coconut milk. Climb up the tree, you know, crack it open, yeah. put the yeah, skin out, make it on milk. inside of it. You this don't have juice, juice inside first. of it. Yes, it does. Yeah. So you just squeeze the bejeebers out of it and, and juice comes out? You squeeze it, you blend it, squeeze it, and you get the milk. Really? Yes. All right, so I've also, actually done that with almonds before. I've made my own almond milk. This is delicious. Yeah, yeah, I love cooking stuff. my own food. Love cooking my own food. Okay, so you're right. whipping this all up. Whipping all this all up. So it's very easy to do, right? So we just added all the ingredients in here, butter. And by the way, I love making my own ghee. This is the ghee I made. What's a ghee? So ghee is actually it's like butter that you cook off the protein and evaporate the water. About 20 minutes, two pounds of butter, you have ghee. So ghee is very good for your colon, your guts. And so you kind of put it in there a little bit. I'm good with that. Does this have a smell too? <sighs> smells like butter. Very nice. Okay. All right, you guys ready? Yes. All right, kind of spread that a little bit. I'm gonna put as much butter as I can back into my omelet. All right, here we go. So this is a true farm to table kind of a thing. Yes, yes. We're cooking at the farm right now. Nice, 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 nice. So Beautiful are you gonna use day. any of the the dill and flowers and different things, or we just will get there. Oh, oh we man, will I can't get wait. there. This is a little topping. So yeah, the show almost is... over. I have to eat, you know. <laughs> we'll get there soon enough. <laughs> so we're open Monday through Fridays, and we have different hours for different organization, collaborative organizations. If you're a nonprofit, if you're a school, and you would like to bring students here for learning purposes, okay. um, we have different hours for you. You contact us. We would open the place Saturday, Sunday for them. The students, they stay in school Monday to Friday. If you're an individual out there looking to volunteer, contact us. We will actually work with your schedule. Nice. Yes. You're not going to burn my eggs, are you? Oh, no, we're not going <laughs> to burn your eggs. Yes. <laughs> I love talking, but we also love eating. So here we go. Okay, so these right here are uh, artichokes, and artichokes yes. are plants that are, as we were talking earlier, there's certain plants that are perennial and certain plants that are not. This is a perennial plant. You put this way back in your yard because it gets to be a big plant in a row over and over again. And if you ever allow this to flower, it is one of the most beautiful flowering plants you could ever get. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Right. Absolutely. Look at that. Okay, so it's cooking up. Heating up it's for us. cooking up. Let that cook a little bit. Okay. I don't. I don't like my eggs runny. I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We'll do yeah, a little omelet. We'll yeah, make sure okay. it's perfect to your taste. <laughs> okay. Perfect to your taste. All right. So there are different ways to prepare this. Oh, I so forgot as you about see, these guys. Yeah. So you already pull it out of the pod. So we call that the pod. Oh, okay. What it looks like. Almost a little bit, all of them. Very cushy. Well, for the record, I did four of them. So if there's some left behind. Oh, that's that's okay. Okay. So what do we do? And then about? here we're going to actually um, do a little cut. Mm -hmm. And you're going to actually deshell it. Okay. So this, as you could feel, is a bit tough. That means you can, you got to deshell it. Oh. Okay? But if it's not that tough, you could eat it. Are we cooking these or we're just putting them inside? We're cooking them, but it's going to be sauteed and it's going to be on the side. Okay. So here is our omelet. 
All right, ready, and here we go. Serving it up. Almost there. And here is a little of our fennel leaves. We're gonna break it up, sprinkle it on. Okay, and then we're gonna do that. And so for these, you could either eat them green, right, on a side like that, uh -huh. or you could throw them into the pot. Voila. There you go. Okay. Look at that. It's a little fennel greens. And we are done. You ready? Nice. A little salt. Oh. Himalayan salt on top of that, right? Yep. There you go. Okay, look at this. Don't burn yourself. So we have nice the hot. omelet. We have the flava beans. Yep. Both raw and sautéed. Yes. So we're supposed to eat this together? Yep. All right, we can do this. I'd have you feed me, but you're going to, fingers would be missing. That's nice. Natural flavor just comes out. And nice everything and is fresh. Yes. Love this. Well, for the record, you can make your own. <laughs> I will. I sure will. <laughs> Thank you very much. Absolutely, Nick. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for joining me on another excursion of Things Green. Our goal is to educate, inform, and entertain so you can become exposed to a green lifestyle inside and outside of the home and community, all on your terms. Join me next time right here as we help you with Things Green. John Delmatoff Backhoe Service has been serving Southern California for over 22 years and is a proud supporter of Things Green. Being out in the yard and garden has never been so much fun. With our many playful laser cut pet, garden, and yard signs, more information at instylesteel.com. For nearly 90 years, the Bonide family has provided solutions to lawn and garden pest problems. Whether it's an insecticide, weed killer, fungicide, or plant care product, Bonide products will provide you the best solution to your lawn, garden, or home pest problem. Southland Sod Farms, creators of genuine marathon sod. Pre-grown, tall fescue grass. More information at sod.com. DRAM has been providing gardeners with professional equipment for over 80 years. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Would you? I'm Nick Fedorov, host of Things Green, where we introduce nuggets of green lifestyle from gardening, upcycling, answering your questions, sustainability, even discussing environmental issues. You can become more confident in making the right decisions for you and your family. So come along as we are Things Green. Out in the yard and garden has never been so much fun. 
With our many playful laser cut pet, garden, and yard signs. More information at instylesteel.com. For nearly 90 years, the Bonite family has provided solutions to lawn and garden pest problems. Whether it's an insecticide, weed killer, fungicide, or plant care product, Bonite products will provide you the best solution to your lawn, garden, or home pest problem. Southland Sod Farms, creators of genuine marathon sod. Pre-grown, tall fescue grass. More information at sod.com. DRAM has been providing gardeners with professional equipment for over 80 years. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. And that's the way you keep your plants moist. Hi, I'm inviting you to come down to one of the free home shows where I give free garden talks. All you have to do is go to my website, thingsgreen.com, to see when the dates and the venues are at. Okay, you ever see one of these before? This is an actual milk container that they take in and uh, they use for processing. Processing milk, of course. And of course, milk is just loaded with calcium. So what do we do? Do we take the milk out of this thing and put it on our plants? Or do we take a cow and, you know, milk the cow on our yard? Now, we're not gonna wanna do anything of that sort. What we can do, well, first off, let's talk about calcium. Why is calcium so important for our plants? Well, there's a number of reasons. One of the reasons is that even though it's not a, a primary or macronutrient like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, it is called a micronutrient. And there's a bunch of them that are necessary that help other things happen. They help the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. They help the micronutrients. When you put all these little things together, your plants really look good. Let me give you an example. When you have lack of calcium in a plant, have you ever seen where you had really mottled and kind of kind of really yucky leaves that they don't look like they have any insects? And I get this asked on my gardening show, all of the time where the leaves are all puckered looking and they think oh, oh no something's been slurping up the juices inside of the leaves and of course that right there is is a huge problem right and it's well are you noticing any insects no there's no thrips because thrips have piercing and sucking insect parts no there's no thrips by the way whether it's one or many of them it's called thrips and these thrips are really known for doing this in with citrus. But if you have a lack of calcium, that could be a problem. That could happen. That'll manifest itself. Another thing that happens is that you'll see new growth kind of look like it's chlorotic, where it's not getting green all the way around, but you have some of the right in the center will be kind of more green than outwards. That's also an indication of a problem with calcium deficiency. Now, calcium for our plants does come in a powdery form. Oh, 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 I almost forgot. Have you ever seen a tomato, a squash, an eggplant, especially tomatoes, and it has that brown leathery thing, lesion we'll call it, that's on the bottom of, of the tomato? It's pretty disgusting looking, I have to tell you that. But if you just chop it off, you can eat the tomato. Whenever you have that brown lesion on the bottom, sometimes it turns black, that brown lesion is called blossom end rot. And that's 100% due to lack of calcium. So how do we fix something like that? Well, you know, here we have what is called the, uh, the chicken that laid the golden egg. That's what we have right here. The chicken that laid the golden egg. Okay, now typically if you look at your nursery rhymes, it is the goose that laid the golden egg. But for how expensive eggs are right now, and there doesn't seem to be any relief in the near future, we have to covet these things. And you want to know something? We, we can use the eggs for culinary purposes, but we can also use the rest of it. Why not maximize 
our investment. Look, these things are a lot of, they're really, well, these are empty, but when they're full, they're very expensive and people are just going just crazy about it. And I can see why. So crazy that at the thingsgreen.com botanical gardens, homestead and urban farm, we actually started growing chickens. And we'll talk about how to do that in probably some other shows. But the point is, is that, is that uh, now we're getting eggs, almost kind of feels like it's too many eggs because uh, out of five chickens, you're getting one egg per chicken a day, and that's quite a bit. But the thing of it is, is that eggs are expensive and we can use the egg shells for the benefits of our plants. And let me show you how to do that. You know, one of the uh, things that we, the, the first thing that we want to do, I should say, is that whenever you get eggs, you want to make sure that you rinse them off because there's bacteria that can be created on these things that is really not beneficial. So you crack the eggs and you just throw them in water and you give them a nice bath. So once they've had their nice bath, you know, run, running water is probably best. Then you could take and you could process them. Well, what a lot of people do is that they're going to take and they're going to they're going to take the eggs, they're going to put them down, and then they'll they'll just either kind of scrunch them up like this, or they'll take a rolling pin, and you got to be careful with the rolling pin you use. This right here is one of these fancy ones that Mrs. Things Green uses to clobber me with, but this right, she doesn't clobber me. Uh, she uses the wood one, but you want to use a wood one here because look how it sticks, and it still doesn't break it down. This right here is going to take a couple of years for it to break down if you were to take it and you were to put it inside of your garden. That's a huge, huge disadvantage. You want to make this as available as possible. So what we do instead is that we could take and we can use either a dehydrator or we can use an oven. And after they've been washed, you put them on a tray. Once they're on the tray, then all you have to do is to, is to let them sit there. Low temperatures. This one right here is actually 159 degrees. Remember, it's a dehydrator, it's not an oven. 159 degrees. We've left them in for as long as 24 hours, but we found out that after a couple of hours, they're usually pretty good. So what we're gonna do here is show you what they look like. And we open this up here. And it doesn't matter what kind of dehydrator that you use. You can use your oven, put it at a very low temperature, 100 degrees, 125 degrees, check on them. Now, the longer they stay in the oven, they'll actually kind of brown up on you, even though they may be white eggs. Our brown eggs are gonna stay brown. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna pull these out and we have, to, see like we got one little brown egg in there. And then we're going to take these and we're going to pull these out and we have some more eggs. So we've got a lot of eggs to deal with. Let's just, we're going to consolidate. These are actually warm. It's kind of cool. Okay. So if we were to take these and we were to squish them with one of these, it'd be a whole lot better than taking them straight out just like this without doing any kind of processing to them. So we want to make sure, so I don't want to make sure of anything. So remember, if you don't process them, the pieces are bigger, they take longer to break down. Use the right kind of rolling pin. These that, that are a little bit on the softer side, everything's going to stick to it. Use a wooden one instead. Or what you could do is get yourself a pestle and mortar. Very old school over here, but it sure is really kind of cool. You know what's really neat about these? These are very inexpensive. They're, they're made out of concrete. And what you do is that you'll, we'll end up putting our eggs in here. And then just by the weight of this, we're gonna start to do some dancing in, on the inside here. So let's just do this. Let's put a few in. You don't have to put a whole bunch. If you want to, you can crush them up to help them along. If you don't want to, you can just take in, go like this. Now, here's the time when you can go ahead and you could probably start singing to yourself. That's what you could do. So if you could see this right here, we're going to be crushing this up. And it's like this. So it, the less you put in here, the quicker 
it'll actually break down because there's just less friction, there's less things for getting in the way. Oh, this is good. Sing to yourself. I was actually done about 15 seconds ago. I'm just enjoying this so much. Okay, so that's basically all you gotta do. We're broken down quite a bit over here. I'll show it to you in a second, but I neglected to share with you real quick. You'll go online and you'll see a lot of misinformation in there. You'll see people, they'll be taking this kind of stuff. They're gonna put it in there. Remember, if it's not cooked first, it's not gonna break down for you as easily. So make sure that you do something like this and break it down real well. Uh, so if you cook it and you put it in here, uh, you can take and bust it up much better, but adding a little water could also help out a little bit. But I find out it doesn't still get to this beautiful powdery stuff that we have here. I mean, just think about it for a second. This is really pretty cool. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Check that out. Now, all you have to do is to take about a tablespoon and add this to your plants. The neat thing about calcium is that there's nothing, there's nothing on, on scientifically that I know of at least that says that this ends up being coming too toxic for your plants because regardless, I mean, you could put a whole lot on there and it's not gonna hurt the plants in other words. We don't want to put way too much, but think about it for a second. You could take this, you could put it in a shaker and you could put it on your lawn. You could put it, you could put, uh, I would put like a, a quarter cup of this and I would put it by every single plant that I have in my yard. I would take and I put a, I don't know, wouldn't I actually do it? Uh, I would take a tablespoon like this and put it in every single house plant. So when you have this plan going along, you're gonna be able to maximize all, everything that's at, that is at your disposal over here. And the best part about it is, is that it's just so simple. You know what, let's, uh, let's crush up this brown one and see what happens. You see the color of it? It should be brown. Right? Oh yeah, a little bit of a tinge there. to get a table that's not so squeaky. Yeah, there's a little bit in there. So it's a little bit of a different color. Look at that. Oh, so nice. All right, so the bottom line, utilize every single egg at your disposal. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we're gonna beat the system with having eggs being so expensive. Oh, sorry. I'm having too much fun with my horn of plenty. That's what this is called. It's also called a cornucopia. Chances are you may or may have never heard of that word in your life, but it is a traditional kind of a gizmo, usually around the holidays. It could be Thanksgiving or Christmas or in springtime. It really doesn't matter. The whole concept behind using a horn of plenty is for a table setting. Now, it has a pretty interesting history to this. The horn of plenty it is said that in the mythical world that there was this baby guy that was like a like some kind of god small g inside that was a baby and the father wanted to eat this baby so what happened is that there was a goat that decided to raise this baby king and uh, the goat fed the baby but an interesting thing happened one of its horns broke off and inside was food and it gave food a plenty. So cornucopia, cornu means horn 
and copia means abundance. So that's the that's kind of like the the back on this what this is all about the history on all that. There's other things, and again, it all gets into this mythological stuff that that uh, you could read about, I guess, online. But it's kinda, it's kind of fun, regardless, knowing that there is a word out there that you can now say and you could use it in a sentence. Hey. I've got a table setting and I'm going to make a cornucopia or I'll have a cornucopia. And the idea behind a cornucopia is to put fresh fruits and vegetables and whatever is in season for that time period. So whether it's spring, summer, fall, winter, whatever kind of food that you have, you put it on your table and then you just have the, the, the stuff spill out of it and people then will just pick it up and they'll, and they'll eat away at it. So it's really kind of a, it's kind of a neat thing when you think about it. But the thing of it is, not many people know what this is. So we're gonna create a table setting that is a little bit more modern. How about we have a modern cornucopia? And we're gonna start off with harvesting the things that are around us. Now, a lot of this stuff I have here uh, is I, I grew myself. Some of it is plastic. So <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't suggest eating that stuff, okay? Don't eat the plastic stuff. Although it might be good for roughage. But regardless, here I have a really fun thing. This is a cutting board that somebody had given me and I, and I love this shape of this cutting board because it has this beveled edge on here. You've got the cutting surface. You have a handle so you could hang it up. Really, really cool. So let's make our first cornucopia, even though there's no cornu on this or any horn, it is good for a table setting. And there is nothing that is right when you do something like this and there's nothing that is wrong. But it's kind of fun to kind of keep in mind that you have uh, a design factor that, that needs to be included in here. So normally we do things in odd numbers. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. That's normally, if you were to go to like to a, uh, a museum, you're gonna see things in those kind of numbers. However, if you go to a, uh, in a landscape, you'll see the same thing, one, three, five, these odd numbers are appealing to the eye. So let's see what we can come up with over here and if I could really do that odd number thing because the whole idea is to just give a horn of plenty. We want to give plenty with our table settings. Now I was kind of digging on this right here. This right here is a squash that I grew and it's almost the size of a, of a torpedo. It could be one of those things that you could put on a person's neck to pull them off the stage. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. So I like the characteristic of this. So I'm gonna put this, you know what, let me get this out of the way so we don't see it any longer because it's just not something that I wanna, wanna do. We'll take our fruit out of here. Do you see my little ladybug right there, isn't that cute? That's a little ladybug I made. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna in basically engulf this whole board over here. But what we'll do here is that we're going to bring our decorating things into it. I like the idea of having a little candle and we're gonna nestle the candle inside. Now what we can do is, how about putting a, uh, how about putting a little baby hay bale in there? <laughs> yeah, get some straw activity going on. How about putting in some color? We could put a little color. This right here is a bell pepper. Oh, and I like the ladybug. So this right here is a table setting that if this was a, real one, someone can take it off. It's far enough away from this, we don't want it to sound. How many pieces do we have? One, two, three, four, five. You see, that works. Or if you want, we have these other baby squash. Let's see, we put that in there? No, I don't want that in there. I could put a lemon in here and then, oh, you know what, let's go like this. There we go. Nah, I don't like that. Let's just keep it like that. Super, super simple. And then what we do, is that come the time, you could take and put a little torch on it like this. Oh, is this not too cool or what? I'm so digging on that. All right, so here's another kind of table setting that we could put together 
our version of a cornucopia here at the thingsgreen.com botanical gardens and all we did here is we got a couple of tree rounds now what's neat about these tree rounds is that you don't have to go cutting up your neighbor's tree but you can go down to one of those craft stores and you can buy these tree rounds so we so we, we actually bought this tree round we have another one and then we put a block underneath here see it's I mean, it's not pretty or anything but it is when you put it all together so we have a stair step kind of activity going on over here so what else are we going to do how are we going to to make this look pretty all right here's a here's a squash this is a this is a squash. we're going to put this one down here i like the way that 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 this little band because it kind of like can hold things and let's put some Let's put some other fruit and vegetables involved in this. How about a little gourd? Could put a gourd there. Digging on that. Do you want to put another? Yeah, let's put another, another candle up here. And then, oh, look at this! Look at this! Look at this! Look at this! Look, look at what we did! Look at it! See? Now we have something that's kind of like book ending yet. We have our three. Even those four on a plate here. There's still three things going on. And you know, if you wanted to add a little bit more color on here, you could do that. Now uh, this right here is something, this, this is a, a cucumber. This is a cucumber that was grown, it's too big. You know what, I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna put this here. And then we're gonna put the cucumber right here. <gasps> oh, is that not too cool? Let's count our pieces to make sure that it is good for the eye. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How did I do that? Huh? How did I do that? Absolutely perfect on that end of it. And then if we wanted to, we can adorn with a couple more of these. And don't be afraid to like, like, you know, do a little crookedness in there. So I put two more pieces, which still makes it empty. This is much fuller. You know what? I even think we should do something more. Let's put another one of these in here. We'll put this one upside down. Oh, I like that. Here is an apple. This one was real, by the way. No, I'm gonna say this for later. <laughs> Don't eat with your mouth full. That's horrible. All right, hold on a second. Okay. And then this is gonna be our odd, odd person out again. Anyway, so the idea here is to have plenty. This is a minimalistic one. This one right here is a little bit, a little bit more or less minimalistic. We torch this thing, got it going. Make sure that we keep the flame. Oh wait, can you imagine if you were to light that? Go all the way down. Don't want to go in there. Keep all this other stuff away. If we want to, we can use our pumpkins. You don't have to just use the pumpkin. You can use other things with the pumpkin, and there's just lots of different stuff, a lot of different ways to decorate. These are all pumpkins, by the way, gourds and pumpkins. So this could be a setting just all by itself over here. I don't want to mess up our, our dealio. But to see how fun this is, again, you, there are no rules on how you set this up, why you would set it up. is is just more of a decorating feature than anything. If people want, again, you can have them just say, hey, take whatever is in there. They can cut it up. You can use, you know, even if you're to do this, you have a bite out of the apple. It'll look gross in a little bit because the, the, uh, the apple part will start turning brown on you. But the point is, it's really a fun thing to do. You put it in the middle table. It's a great conversation piece. You can encourage your kids to make something like this, get the grandkids involved in it, get Uncle Joe, Aunt Bertha, whoever's in your family to put this thing to put this thing together. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is just another way that we can use a lot of the vegetables and such and fruits that we grow in our own homes that we can take and share our cornucopia, even though we don't have a cornu or our home, uh, a, a, a horn in this particular thing. It's a really nice table setting. So knock your socks off with that, okay? Ever wonder how you can apply a weed and feed and still get weeds popping up in your lawn? It's not that the weed and feed isn't working. You see, lawn maintenance companies can bring in weed seeds on their equipment from another yard. 
Birds drop seeds while in mid-flight, and Mother Nature has a way of blowing in weed seeds from miles away. When you see those random weeds, you can simply spot spray. But instead of mixing up gallons of weed killer, dedicate a handheld multi-purpose sprayer to get the job done. Pump, adjust the spray pattern, and spray. It's just that simple. Thanks for joining me on another excursion of Things Green. Our goal is to educate, inform, and entertain so you can become exposed to a green lifestyle inside and outside of the home and community, all on your terms. Join me next time right here as we help you with Things Green. John Delmatoff Backhoe Service has been serving Southern California for over 22 years and is a proud supporter of Things Green. Being out in the yard and garden has never been so much fun. With our many playful laser cut pet, garden, and yard signs, more information at instylesteel.com. For nearly 90 years, the Bonide family has provided solutions to lawn and garden pest problems. Whether it's an insecticide, weed killer, fungicide, or plant care product, Bonide products will provide you the best solution to your lawn, garden, or home pest problem. Southland Sod Farms, creators of genuine marathon sod. Pre-grown, tall fescue grass. More information at sod.com. DRAM has been providing gardeners with professional equipment for over 80 years. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you.